Hello everybody and welcome to the What I Made episode, which was supposed to be just for things in April, but it's now halfway through May and some of the things I'm going to show you, I've been mostly working on them this month. So this is going to be hopefully a shortish video on both of these months. Just, I've been making gifts and I didn't want to film this until I was done with them because I wanted to include them, but then I realized that I needed to wait to put the video out so that the gifts would arrive at their intended destination before they went public in this video. And I just, I'm not very good at planning right now. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. But anyway, if you are confused because you are here on my channel for books, this is my monthly video that's not at all about books. Um, it is about what I am knitting and crocheting and whatever else. This month it's just knitting. I haven't been doing anything else. I've been very, very busy with these things. So that rambly preamble out of the way, let's actually look at what I made. So I'm gonna do this in my usual fashion, which is finished objects first, then works in progress. I didn't do any natural dyeing in the past six weeks or so. I'm gonna skip that segment and talk about some acquisitions because I have a, I have a knitting book <laughs> and I have yarn, yarn acquisitions. So let's do it. I have five completed things to show you guys today. One is a project I finished earlier in the year, but it was top secret until now. And then two are for me and then another two are little tiny gifts. So we'll do the ones for me first. Um, and I finished another sweater. This is my librarian pullover. It is a pattern by Skein Deer Knits and it's not really cabling. It, you create the sort of like one one over one cable pattern with um, SSKs and knit two togethers. It's basically you're creating twisted stitches instead of decreasing you knit, you knit the stitches twice. I'd never heard of this before but it was really easy to do and the effect is really cool. Um, I'm not wearing this today. It's a little bit easier to see it when I'm actually wearing it. Um, it fits quite well, but it's very heavy and I'm already a bit warm today. <laughs> so I'm very happy with this. It was really interesting to make, especially um, the shoulder construction and the grafting that you have to do and kind of the shaping to create this more like scoop neck thing. Um, I'd never done that sort of uh, shoulder construction before and I was a little bit lost, but I, I made it work. Um, the only thing that I think went wrong with this project is the yarn. This is Knit Picks Twill in the color Fiddlehead. And I chose this because it's affordable and I love this color and I'm really curious about the yarn base. Um, I, I gotten some Knit Picks Twill fingering weight and this is like the heavy worsted weight. So I got it and there's a reason why the designer says you should like get some woolen spun sheepy sheep wool to make this in. Um, the Knit Picks Twill is very, it's incredibly soft, it's very slippery, it's super wash fine merino, and while it is plump and really, really squishy and everything, it just, it's already shedding, it's already pilling. I wore it once and I was picking just clumps of, of pilled fibers off of the sleeves. And it's heavy. If I had used a woolen spun yarn, it would be much, much lighter. This, it, 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 and because it's slippery and the neck is quite wide, when I'm wearing it, the weight of the sleeves starts to pull the neckline side to side and it feels like it's gonna slip off my shoulders so it's it just comes down to yarn choice and now I know but making this and then realizing how it had turned out with the weight and the feel and the pilling just confirmed to me that I really need to steer myself more in the direction of rustic wools for sweaters. Um, I, people are really into merino because it's very soft, it's very comfortable against the skin, and I like that too. Who who doesn't like the really soft stuff? Um, but I just think this, it feels so fragile. It just isn't as durable as other types of wools, and I would like to experiment with more, more durable fibers, I guess. So 
Aside from the yarn choice, this came out really well, and I could see myself making another one in more um, appropriate yarn and enjoying doing it all over again. <laughs> This other thing that I made for myself was the random cast on that I showed in the last video. It's this tank top. This is the Azimuth tank top by Julia Wilkins. It's from um, the summer 2020 issue of Pom Pom Quarterly. And this is the one that I just cast on as a, a whim because I wanted to use this blue yarn and something summery and I wanted to knit brioche and I had this pattern so I just made it. I don't wear tank tops though, but it fits. <laughs> I changed all sorts of things with this. I followed the rough outline of the pattern, um, but I did change a lot of things and it's a complete serendipity perhaps that it actually fits. Um, so one, I worked it at a different gauge, at a much tighter gauge. So I used the size four stitch count to get basically in between a size one and a size two for actual measurements. I didn't do the bottom ribbing, I just went straight into the brioche. Um, I did the I-cord edge differently. Um, I couldn't make sense of the pattern's instructions, I kept trying to do it and it just looked terrible. So I did my own thing to get that I-cord edge and I did do the V-neck uh, a bit differently. Because I continued doing my own method for the I-cord edge, it just looks a bit different. I think I've got the back side of a brioche stitch next to the I-cord and that shouldn't be there, but it looks nice because it's intentional and it's symmetrical and who cares, so. The yarn I used for this is Third Vault Yarns. The blue color is Companion 4-ply, a little big blue box, which I believe is TARDIS inspired. Um, the variegated eyelet color is also Third Vault Yarns. That's the Alba Ether Glasgow 2024 bid colorway. And then the um, kind of sparkly gray tonal is some Treasure Goddess sparkle toes that I had left over from another project. So made completely from stash yarn. I didn't have to play yarn chicken. I'm very happy actually. The only problem is I don't wear tank tops. So maybe I will gift this to somebody else who is roughly the same size as me <laughs> and wants to, wants to wear a really squishy tank top. So it was really fun to make though. It was a lot of just plain knitting and it was very mindless. And I, I knit almost all of this while listening in on like work meetings and stuff. It was very relaxing. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to show some things that I made as gifts for my friend Brie. And this is the kind of secret part of this video, which is why I can't put it out until the package has actually arrived to her. But I made three things for her. And two of these are not surprises really to her because I told her I was going to make things for baby, <laughs> you know? She's expecting a baby later this year and I really wanted to make baby knits. But the first thing, is actually something I decided to make for Brie months ago when I saw the pattern. Like I saw this pattern and went, oh my God, I have to make this for Brie. This would be perfect for her. So I made it. <laughs> I don't know how well I can show this. Oh, you can see the beads. Yay. This is a capelet. It's like a small cape. It's called Midnight Slayer, and it's a pattern by Julie Knits in Paris. Let me turn it around so you can see the back side of it. This thing is so cool. <laughs> so there is um, kind of like a lace collar, and there is more lace at the bottom, and I added beads to the lace because I kind of wanted to zhuzh it up a little bit. Um, it's called Midnight Slayer, and I think it's, it's supposed to be kind of inspired by Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch show on Netflix and stuff. So the original is like grays and reds and blacks and stuff. I went with a celestial theme, which is why it's navy and this um, 
sparkle sock yarn, this gray tonal. So there's some sparkle in the main part of it, and then I added the beads to kind of get the effect of like stars, basically. So it came out really well. I'm very pleased with it, and I never want to do so much lace with beads again. <laughs> but despite having to deal with like at one point 500 stitches in the rows, 600 stitches in the rows, I don't remember, um, it was really good practice. I learned how to do things. I was got a lot of practice doing um, cables without a cable needle because the, the panels are divided by um, these these cables and stuff and then learning how to integrate beads into knitting was really interesting as well so that is Midnight Slayer this is the obviously the big gift for Brie and then there are the baby knits I know this is very early um, Brie's expecting a little bit later this year and then the baby will not be wearing wool garments until like January probably. So um, I have no idea if I really got the sizes correct or not, but the first thing I made is this. And this should be a four to six month size. It is um, the Sunday suit by Petite Knit, who has a lot of baby garments and stuff. And I think this is one of her really popular patterns. And what do I what I want to say about this one? Um, I do kind of wish that I had done something different for the button band. You you knit it as you go, so it's not you don't like pick up stitches and knit the button band later. And while I was doing it, I kept thinking I don't think this is going to be sturdy enough. I kind of wish that I had skipped making the buttonholes, and then I could have done snaps like done like a ribbon backing on the button band and put in snaps and then I could have done like decorative buttons on it or something. Um, but as it is, even with the buttons and the, the knitted buttonholes here, I think it's going to be okay. But I feel a bit nervous about the stability of the button band. <laughs> we'll see though. So, and this particular one with the Sandiskarn Sunday uh, yarn, it's very thin when you knit with it. I mean like light, light fingering. And I ended up not just wet blocking this, but also um, running it through the dryer on a very, very gentle cycle. And it worked, like it's super wash wool. So you, technically you can put it through the washer and the dryer, but I was gentle with it. I just tried to plump it up and it worked really well. The fabric of this became so much tighter and squishier and stuff when I ran it through the dryer. So I'm, yeah, I'm very happy with it now. I was skeptical at first about <laughs> how tight the fabric would be, but yeah, it was nice. And then this next one is actually my favorite thing that I've made because it's brioche. It's a baby brioche sweater. I know. <laughs> This is called the Eliza sweater, and I don't remember the designer's name, but it, it will be linked down in the, um, the description. And it is just a teeny tiny brioche sweater, and it took me ages to knit because I kept ripping it back to adjust things so that it would be the way I wanted it to be. Um, but yeah, the yarn that I used for this was also a Sandus Garn. I used Duo, which is a cotton wool blend. It's a DK weight yarn, and it also blocked beautifully. It really plumped up and everything once it had been, um, you know, soaked and then dried and everything. And I want one of these for myself now. Like, I, I know. <laughs> I'm knitting baby clothes and I'm thinking, oh, but I just want my own really squishy, deeply ribbed brioche sweater, so it's cute. This one, I think, may have come out a little bit bigger than it was supposed to. I made the smallest size, um, but yeah, so this one may have to be worn a little bit later. I really have no idea how big babies are and how quickly they grow. I, I don't know anything about babies, so <laughs> if nothing else, at least the garments are cute, even if they never get worn. I tried. <laughs> so those are all of my finished things, and now I will show you quickly the three projects I'm currently working on. 
I have started my uh, Handsome Chris pullover. This is a reconstruction of a sweater worn by Chris Evans' character in the movie Knives Out. Um, I think the person who reverse engineered it is Karen Schaefer and the pattern is available for free on Ravelry as uh, like a Google Docs download. So I have started it. It's worked from the bottom up and it has so many cables. I'm really happy with how the cables are looking so far. It's just a bit slow <laughs> to work on. Um, this is gonna be a long-term project. And I'm, I'm not really confident in the sizing. The pattern has numbers, but it hasn't actually been tested. And I could see from other people's projects on Ravelry that they were getting, some people were like, unable to get the right size. Other people have found that it worked just fine for them. I felt like I couldn't get gauge, like no matter how tightly I knit this yarn, it was always going to be a looser, larger gauge than was called for. So I went down to the smallest size. Usually I'm a small or a size two in, in patterns, but this time I went down to the extra small or size one. And if it ends up being a little bit tighter fitting because of that, that is okay. <laughs> I would rather have it be a little bit more snug than just drown me because I don't I don't need any more like really big sweaters. So yes, I am working mine in the round. The pattern has you knit it in pieces like the back and then the front and then the sleeves and then you seam everything together. I'm doing it in the round until a split for the sleeves. I'll probably also do the sleeves in the round from the cuff up and then sew them in at the end like you're supposed to, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. This yarn is Knit Picks Simply Wool, I believe, in the color Wordsworth. It's this kind of neutral brownish gray color, which is a neutral I can actually wear. I'm making this for myself. I make almost everything for myself and I need to make more gifts. I need to knit more for other people. <laughs> so anyway, um, I got a good start on this because I wanted to like, you know, figure it out and, and get it going so that I didn't have to keep referring to the charts all the time. <laughs> I laugh. I'm gonna be referring to the charts for a long time. And it's been on break because um, knitting this really gets to my fingers because I have to knit it so tightly. But once again, lots of practice on cabling without a cable needle, which makes this faster than if I were um, having to shift all the stitches to a cable needle and then back and everything. This next one is a bit of a smaller project. I said I was going to knit socks. I have one sock. <laughs> And I have started on the second sock, so I'm on my way to having a pair of socks. I'm paranoid about getting one, one thing of a pair done and then never coming back to the second one. So I try to do them at the same time or cast on the second one as soon as possible. So these are the curly whirly socks from the Crimson Stitchery. I don't have sock blockers or anything, so it's a bit difficult for me to show the pattern, but you might be able to see that if I just stretch it out a little bit. Um, so yeah, this is a summer sock pattern. It's a lace and lots of one by one rib or one by one twisted rib. I made it much longer, probably like six inches taller than the pattern calls for just because I'm a long sock type of person. And I've also modified the toe a little bit. I didn't take the pattern all the way down. I just transitioned into completely rib um, instead of trying to I didn't want to deal with trying to do decreases while also doing the lace. No. <laughs> so yes, curly whirly socks. Um, this yarn is also a third vault yarns. It's com not companion foreplay. I think it's the librarian sock base in the color Cosmic Turtle, which I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure that it is um, a Discworld inspired yarn color, so yeah. This has been really fun to knit. I thought it was gonna be really complicated, but it's actually more like a four row repeat, just you do it in slightly different ways in each section. And I can 
knit it while watching television. Let's, let's say that. I have made mistakes. Did I rip back to fix my mistakes? No, because I, I almost never rip back. <laughs> So this is my small project. And then my final one to show you that is in progress is a shawl. This will be a nice little segue into acquisitions as well because I got the really expensive pattern book. Oh my goodness. Um, this is 52 weeks of shawls from Lina Magazine. They did 52 weeks of socks last year, I think, and it was really popular. And then this is the follow-up all on shawls. And there really are like 52 or 53 shawl patterns in this. I fell in love with two of the patterns and then a third one. And I bought it, it's so expensive, but I bought it because I didn't want to wait for the individual patterns to be out at the end of this year or whatever. And I plan on sharing the book with some friends as well. So it's a really, really beautiful book. It has tons of big, beautiful pictures and a variety of shawls, all that fun stuff. Um, and as you can see, I've tabbed a bunch of things that I'm interested in. There are three shawls from this that I definitely want to make. And I've started on one of them, which is Quicksand. This is by Hanna Maciejewska. Um, I believe her name is Polish, so please correct me if I've said it wrong. Um, so you knew I was gonna do this one because it's cables and brioche. <laughs> yes, I literally cast this on the same day that the book arrived in the mail, and it's looking pretty good so far. It's very dark. So let me see if I can show it up close. So it kind of looks like sand dunes. I mean, obviously the name of it is quicksand, uh, but you have these sections of brioche and these meandering cables and it's, it's fantastic. Um, it is not plain knitting though. <laughs> I have to refer to the pattern line by line and I can memorize the rough idea of what I'm supposed to be doing, but I, I still haven't memorized how, how many rows that you do in between cable twists and stuff like that. So it is going to be a very, very elongated triangular shawl. You just keep working and working and working it wider and wider and then you cast off when it's at its widest point and it's gonna have this very long skinny end. This is not my favorite shape for a shawl. Usually I'm all about like really deep rectangular shawls or square shawls or semicircular shawls. Um, but for me, this is, it's, it's a process knit. Just doing it is really fun. Seeing how the stitches and the, the cables and the brioche comes together and then, you know, the finished product is going to be really pretty. Like who cares if I can figure out how to wear it or not? I'll, I'll have made it. So this yarn is stash yarn. Um, if you've been here for a while, you may remember that I bought this, this pretty uh, red yarn about two years ago. I was going to make a sweater out of it and then it turned out to just not be the right kind of yarn. It, I tried making the sweater. It was a crocheted sweater and it just it didn't work. It was not the right yarn for that project. So I saved it. I had this sweater's quantity worth of Knit Pick Swish DK in the color Garnet Heather, I think. And it's like, this is my favorite color in the whole world. I love it. I love wearing it. It's so beautiful. And as soon as I saw that this pattern took DK weight yarn and I had more than enough to make the large size, I just said, that's it. This, this is the project that this yarn belongs to. So I have three and a half more repeats to go. <laughs> I think I might not finish this one until June, probably. Now let's talk about yarn acquisitions and the next couple of projects that I'm planning on starting whenever I can. Uh, so first up, I'm going to have another shawl from 52 weeks of shawls. Um, and I've got yarn for it already. It is the stairway shawl by Susanna Sommer. Looks like that. This is also one that has brioche. There's an up close picture of it. 
This is the first shawl that I saw from this collection and I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and I knew what colors I wanted to do it in because I had a skein of this beautiful purple sock yarn and I was like, I should just get more of this and a really good contrast color and it'll be perfect for this shawl. So I did. <laughs> This yarn is Treasure Goddess yarn. It's the Treasured Yak Toes Sock yarn, and it is 70% merino, 20% yak, and 10% nylon. So it's pretty bougie yarn. Um, the purple color is Song of the Sirens, and this um, gray color, it's got a little bit of brown in there as well. This is called Sandy Shore, and this is the natural color of the yarn base. Um, it's been treated like the dyed version so that it, it knits up the same, but this is what those wool and yak fibers look like together. So I think it's a really lovely color. And it has a very, very high contrast between the two, which means it may be one of my best looking brioche projects ever whenever I eventually cast it on. I'm excited about this one, but also um, sometimes I realize how expensive yarn is and I get nervous about actually using it. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody else feel the same way? Oh well. It is beautiful, beautiful yarn. I have mentioned this next one before, I think in the last video, but I actually got the rest of the yarn for it. Um, I'm planning on making uh, the Bindweed Cardigan by Xenia Nydion. It's a pattern from Making Stories. I don't know where I put the magazine, otherwise I would show it to you. Um, but you do it with some fingering weight yarn held double with some mohair silk. And I had to get more. I had some of this and then I went out and I had to buy the other half of the yarn that I needed. So I have it now. I was planning on swatching for it already. I just had too many other projects on my plate. But now I have an entire project bag stuffed with squishy yarn. <laughs> So this is a pattern that I need to just do a swatch for, kind of get my head around the cable pattern while I swatch as well. And hopefully I will be able to work on that pretty soon. There's also another cardigan. I can't remember if I talked about this one before, but it's the Aureus Cardigan by Michelle Wong. It was published in a very old issue of Pom Pom Quarterly. And I came across this because Anushka of the Crimson Stitchery here on YouTube has done a version of this and I thought it was stunning. It's like this really cool fuchsia hot pink color, but it, it looks amazing. And I really like the like lace and kind of cable details on this cardigan, so I wanted to make it, but I wanted to do something different with the yarn, which is why I have a cone of yarn. Yes, in a gray color. I really need cardigans in neutrals, guys. <laughs> so this is a cone of Holst Garn Super Soft in the color Flannel Gray. And what I want to do is test this holding it double to see if I can get roughly the DK weight yarn that I need for this pattern. A single cone is I think this is 500 grams, which means it's maybe close to 3,000 yards. So if I hold it double, I should still, I think, have enough yarn for the cardigan. But I decided to get this anyway. Whether or not it turns out to be the right thing for the Aureus cardigan, I want to play around with Holst uh, Garn Super Soft a little bit because I've heard so many people talking about it and like how it really uh, blooms when it's wet blocked and stuff, and I just I'm curious. So I'm going to do a couple of swatches with this, probably um, just one strand and then two strands held double and see what I think about it. Because who knows. But yeah, I'm making a lot of stuff in gray all of a sudden. I just realized that. <laughs> and the last acquisition was a gift. I wanted to show this because it's so pretty. <laughs> My friend Chris sent this to me. It is Essence of Autumn hand dyed yarn in the color Zephyr. And this is like some more really luxurious yarn. It is 75% merino, 15% cashmere, and 10% silk. 
It is also a single ply yarn. And, ooh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It's so soft and I love the colors. These are like my kind of colors right there. I don't, I don't know. I kind of don't want to mix it with anything else, which means I need to find a one skein project that'll work with a really heavily variegated yarn color. But for right now, I will just keep this one and squish it occasionally until just the right project is, is there for it. And thank you to Chris for sending that to me because I have been drooling over Essence of Autumn hand dyed yarn for a while now. <laughs> She's a Canadian dyer and her colors are just stunning. So, and that is it. I think, I think I've covered everything that I planned on. As you can see, I've been very busy and I have no idea when I'm going to finish any of my current projects. I'm trying to not be like overwhelming myself with whips because then I just don't, make enough progress on any one thing. I feel like I'm never finishing projects. So whenever I finish one of these, which will probably be the socks, I will move on to one of my next projects. But yeah, let me know what you have been up to. <laughs> what have you been knitting or crocheting? I swear there will be more crochet in my future. I've just been heavily into knitting garments, I guess. So I don't, I don't love a lot of crochet garments, but I need to make some new afghans, which means more crochet is on the horizon for me. But anyway, I think I shall end it there before I ramble on too much. So thank you for watching. I'll be back hopefully in a couple more weeks with another one of these. And until then, bye.